Hi, everyone. I'm Tony Piper. This is Sue Hogg. Ah. Now, we um, decided to shake it up a bit, and we um, even renamed our slide after our show. Um, okay. So this is now the Ninja Disruptor. It's not Shake, Shake, Shake. Are you naturally curious, open-minded? Do you uh, perhaps have a little bit of cynicism and uh, be sceptical? Are you easily bored? And do you have incredibly low patience? I don't know if that's anyone here, Tony, but um, does anyone here ever get slightly frustrated about your current system of work or sometimes aspects of your company culture? Do you want to positively disrupt? Yes. <laughs> Enter the white ninja. <laughs> Um, so this talk is for you. Um, the ninjas are masters in the art of intellectual warfare. Um, we're here today to share some ideas about how you can become a ninja in your office. So starting with our white ninja up here, a white ninja wages warfare in plain sight. You can physically see the positive disruption that they're doing. Some great examples of white ninja behaviours are visible clues such as value stream maps, story maps, um, cake indices on the wall, team happiness ratings, story graveyards, fail walls, customer feedback commentary plastered everywhere, sneaky memes popping up randomly and mysteriously on walls at odd times, um, visual value tracking. Now, white ninjas are really good because they take a stand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> white ninjas push back when there's no articulated value, no clear hypothesis or no clear product owner on a piece of work. White ninjas are really good at shuffling people around and moving desks to increase collaboration and communication, and they love getting people out of the building. They love getting people and their teams in contact with the call centre, sales team, frontline staff, and heaven forbid, talking to customers. They love to visit other companies and learn about other systems of work. Now, these white ninjas are great at kicking off voluntary events. So some ideas to plant with you today are kicking off hack days, if you don't already, hacking ideas on your system of work, buying brown bags at lunchtime, starting up a coding dojo, kicking off a library, starting a book club, starting an innovation club, running lean coffees, drinking lean coffees, and, of course, pub retros. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my first favorite. Um, also, they might start hosting meetups. They might start a cop. They might start a guild. They might start a think tank, a do tank, a pitch in, a start in. They really put the in in ninja. So they're not very sneaky and they're visibly disrupting, but in a positive way. And when there's no clear way for a, a white ninja, it's the black ninja. <laughs> now, a black ninja. Yeah, um, goes under the radar to disrupt and to affect change long term without being given permission or even being in plain sight. There's um, some of the weapons that a black ninja might use. No beating Tuesdays. And Thursdays. Short times. Better to do both. So get your team to book out blocks of time um, over the day, uh, let's say on a Tuesday, and get them to book them end to end so that they end up having the whole day free. And then sticking true to that and not letting other people overbook them. So, in effect, what they get is a, a whole day to actually focus on what they love doing every day, so actually writing code and, and delivering. Um, there's more weapons. Automated testing in production. For some reason, I always seem to hear that, no, we're not allowed to do automated testing in production. It's dangerous, it's risky. Uh, you can you know, affect production systems. What if it goes wild and you know, crashes the site? but just set it up. Set up a test suite, point it at production and run it. You get great benefit, great feedback, and it's very low effort. And the best thing is, really, you can do it and no one will know anything about it. <laughs> Avoid gold plating. Um, often get feature requirements, architectural design, UX, experiences, UI design that are really gold plated. And you're expected to build all of these end to end, right, inside the project. Instead, start with thin slices. Build out a number of thin slices that just focus on the raw functionality that you really need, and then start expanding that out. And then ask the question, do I need to spend more time? Planning day, um, at the end of the iteration, spend a whole day doing planning, 
and um, the team can use that day for innovation and other things. Officially it's planning, but really it's whatever they want. So don't ask permission. Arm yourself with ninja skills. Find fellow ninjas. Just do it. It starts with you, Russ. That's right. It starts with you. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. To the second. They had one second left. It was very close.